Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is a live version of our show. Uh, you'll, uh, If you're listening on radio, obviously, you're just hearing the audio version, but we also have a YouTube version of this where you can actually see visuals of this particular show. Today, we're doing an interview with Three Tails RV, Aaron Jemerson. And uh, I was kind of interested, in, uh, I hadn't talked to him in a while, and they uh, kind of take his story and uh, break it out real quick. But for several years they had, while well, they kind of discovered living in an RV to uh, help reduce price, uh, costs big time. And uh, they actually did that for quite a few years um, with, the, with the wish and the dream of being able to travel. Well, just recently, in the maybe last three months or so, they actually got to start traveling. And uh, so they started from the Seattle area <clears throat> and uh, worked their way uh, east. And um, uh, as they were going along, they uh, caught wind of a place to do camp hosting for an RV park and, uh, in uh, Missouri. And so uh, I thought, wow, we got to really catch up with them. So yeah, we had the opportunity to kind of talk about uh, before, uh, during, and after, and uh, a little bit what it's like to be a camp host and the whole works. And uh, we will plan on doing follow-up interviews with them. So at this point, why don't we switch on over to the interview and let's talk to Aaron Jemerson. Okay, we're here with Three Tails RV with Aaron Jimerson, which is actually, uh, you've probably known we've done shows before in the past. And uh, this is kind of an exciting time for Aaron because they uh, have had to live in their RV for quite a long time before they could hit the road. And since, and it hasn't been that long, and since they've been on the road, um, he's got quite the tales to tell. So we're going to cover a couple of things, how you get started. A few things about um, getting prepared and then you fell into camp hosting and I'd like to make sure we cover that too so Aaron it's, it's good to see you again and I'm excited to hear that you're you got a chance to start traveling so uh, can you kind of give us the beginning of how you got started in your RV and what kind of RV you have now well we first we started out with a class A um, it was a 1997 Fleetwood Limited. I'm being corrected. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> That's what our wives are for. <laughs> um, so we started out with that. We had that for a couple years and then decided we needed to uh, change things up a little bit. We got into a situation where we could get a 2000 bounder and we've been working on that for the last few years, fixing it up. That's where a lot of the DIY stuff has come from. On the channel, there's like 150 videos over 150, 150 over 150 videos wow videos on there now about different projects that we've completed on the rv uh most recent one that i did we repainted the dash in the in it it went from a yellow stain sun stain to a nice charcoal gray now wow so that's one of them that's coming up soon here and it's kind of fun because i've watched your channel kind of get discovered and now it's kind of going like crazy and that's good to see uh, I think you're what six thousand subscribers now. Uh, Seven thousand. Wow, actually, <laughs> that's great. Actual number, I can look that up real quick. Okay. Is uh, seven thousand eight hundred and fifteen. I've got four subscribers since early this morning. Wow. The so most recent video that we did was the RV storage compartment handles paint project. Yep, I just watched that restoration while we before the show. I watched it. Um, and uh, anyway, so you um, you don't have to go into detail, but you kind of got pushed in or just kind of discovered the fact you had a chance to live in an RV to kind of reduce your overhead. And I assume to kind of put some money away and get prepared for what you're doing today. Exactly. Um, I work for different companies out in the Seattle area. 
the most recent was a security company that was working with the Amazon contract. And I was a supervisor there where we had an opportunity to uh, put some money away, work on the RV, get put money away, and then we decided it was time to go. We left uh, two months ago, almost three months ago, yeah. and headed across the country and went from Seattle, and now we're in uh, Poplar Bluff, Wyoming. <laughs> I couldn't believe that's where you're at. And or by not the way, Wyoming. By the way, you guys, I wanted to let you know that Aaron actually makes a lot of our logos. So, uh, Good Talk Radio, what you see on our screen, he can't see it, but uh, um, that's made by you, and you did our Paradigm Chimes, and of course my hat, the Ranger Rob, and recently you did the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags for us, which has got the, uh, in white, and it's got a little puppy paws on it, and it came out really good, and everybody loves it, and uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is the culprit that's made our logos for that. I think... Uh, when we before we uh, merged uh, good good music radio, you made that logo, but we uh, merged the two radio stations together <laughs> just to save money. <laughs> um, and I think you made some other stuff for us. And I it's not uh, I haven't. Didn't you do? Uh, no, I did that one. Uh, there's another one out there I did, and I can't remember. <laughs> Paradigm chimes. Yeah, Paradigm chimes. That's the awesome one. Um, that's kind of what inspired me to have you do our. Um, Ranger Rob poopy bags. So, uh, uh, so you you're, you got in the RV. You kind of uh, you're in there for like three years or so, kind of putting the money away, fixing up the RV, and you had the op. What kind of what broke the opportunity for you to hit the road before? And you, you guys aren't in retirement age either, are you? I just turned fifty just a yeah. couple months ago. So you're youngins. So, so we're uh, pre retired. Pre-retired. So, what <laughs> what enabled you to say it's time? Let's hit the road. Honestly, we just got tired of the the Seattle scene. I mean, it, we're going to work with four million people and coming home with six million people, <laughs> yeah, I, and everybody's totally in a hurry to go absolutely nowhere. <laughs> so, it was time for us to make a change. Uh, a couple of years ago, Lori went through some health issues and. Uh -huh. It's, we just decided it was time, time to move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, so let's talk about that that hustle bustle. So obviously you've gone from hustle bustle to kind of your own speed now. What, <laughs> what, 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 how would you describe that? Well, Lori and I have talked about it many times. When we originally were, drove across, we got uh, home. I'm originally from uh, Iowa. So we were in Iowa, we were in an RV park there, and I walked outside and I said, Lori, it's just too quiet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so that was that was a, a, a life-changing event, just being away from the hustle and bustle of, the, of that whole Seattle area. Yeah. So uh, just to kind of take that farther, do you find yourself a little more relaxed, do you find sleeping a little easier? Do you feel like your health is a little better now that things are slowed down a little bit? Well, when I was out in Seattle, kind of a shame to say this, but we had a bad habit of drinking soda. Lots and lots of soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was drinking lots and lots and lots of that. I don't even want to talk about how much. And since then, we, I have switched over to uh, drinking mostly tea, and I think I've lost probably 40 to 50 pounds. Wow. And Lori has done the exactly the same thing. Yeah, and you know, so. I got to laugh. I can I can compare to that because since we got off the road and are in our house, and we have the hot weather, we're not getting outside as much. We're actually having the opposite effect. We're uh, all the weight that we lost and everything. Or now we're kind of gaining it again because we've kind of been homebound, and uh, and and in, in, in the rat race too. So I totally understand that. So that's cool. That's good to hear. So uh, you, you get your RV, you got it, um, you've been working on it, you got it up to par to where you want it to be, and you finally get a chance to hit the road. What was that first day like? How did, what was it like? Well, I didn't, my experience with driving the RV was very limited. I think I pulled it out maybe three times the whole time we had it. The first year and a half, almost two years we had it, I think I drove it three times. Wow. And the way that I describe it is that there is a wobble to a class RV. 
yeah. the, you've got that wobble in the wheel and you get that, that, that feeling. And I remember going to bed that first night after driving from Seattle all the way to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Wow, that's a long drive. I, was do, I can remember laying in my bed, laying in bed going, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like a boat. <laughs> I felt like I was back in the Navy. I'm like, I don't remember this ever, but ugh. So uh, a lot of people ask this question, but uh, was it kind of intimidating? Did you kind of catch on fast? Was it did you, uh, really? I remember when I drove my first big rig, uh, a 40-footer, I was like tense as all get out for the first half hour. And then something just kind of came over me going, you know, this is kind of a piece of cake. Uh, how did you feel? Uh, um, we, we had put had to put a new styrofoam holder on the steering wheel. Originally, it's an older one. The gentleman that had it before me had one of those old style wraps where you wrap it around. Oh, yeah, and that yeah. would cut it. So I had to put one of the real cushy ones on there. I have a habit when... I'm driving the rig that I grab onto that steering wheel death and by grip. death grip. Yes. <laughs> by the time we got to Spokane, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I know your every every uh, joint in your hand hurts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's no blood. So, yeah. <laughs> your hands tingling. Once you get that reference line on the on the line as you're going down the road, I use the uh, the dotted line on the on the side of the, the driver's side. And if you place that just at a certain spot on the RV, which just happens to be the um, the uh, what, the number, yeah. the uh, VIN number on on the RV itself, oh, gotcha. and line that up with those dashes, that was the perfect spot for it to be in. Yeah, so that's I, what I used. I mean, it's going to be different from RV to RV, yeah. but once once you figure out your positioning, uh, it's actually pretty easy. So you you guys are also uh, towing. Right. Right. So, so what, kind of rig, what kind of what kind of rig are you towing? I'm towing a 2000, uh, 2005 Dodge Dakota. Most uh-huh. people don't pull those, but I thought it was something different. Most people like to pull the jeeps, but we've yeah. actually seen a lot of pickups um, being pulled behind trailers. Yeah. On the way out. So. So are you, are you using a dolly, or are you actually uh, f- uh, towing? I have a system. That is from that I actually got from etrailer.com, uh-huh. and it is the um, I can't even think of the name of it. Uh, Roadmaster, okay, I think is what it is. So, d- did you and end up having to put a brake system also uh, in right. in your tr- in your rig? Yes. And did you find that easy or hard to do? I've never had to do that. The initial setup can be quite entertaining. Yeah. I was just watching a video today on YouTube where another gentleman had taken the whole tow system, put it on another truck, and he was towing his his towed around town just to get it adjusted, because you've got different different settings, puts a different pressure onto the brake itself. Yeah. And then one thing we found out that you really got to check the uh, if you brake too much, like going down steep hills. If you go too much, it'll blow the fuse in it. Oh, really? And then you have no braking power whatsoever. So that was an interesting going through some of the passes from Washington into Wyoming. Yeah. So we were talking briefly. Uh, you had uh, where you're at now. You're in Missouri. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So Poplar you, Bluff. You had to drive over, you said, a total of four passes since mm-hmm. you've been on the road. And you've only been on the road for like three months. So uh, uh, being a bounder. Well, that was all in the first. Go ahead. I said that was within the first uh, four days. Wow. Wow. So, uh, uh, of course, now the Bounders are gas engines. So you got a v- V10 in there? Well, they're gas and diesel, but, yeah, I have a V10 in this in yeah. this rig. So uh, you were telling me, uh, like, I, I had a diesel before, so I had the, uh, the compression brakes and stuff like that. And, and of course, uh, I guess with the gas engines, you don't. So you, no. you found that... Uh, Going up some of and these passes, I know you're talking about. They are, they're passes. We're not talking hills. We're talking mountain passes. And so you're saying when you got to the top of those things, you felt so bad for your pounder, you pulled over to give it a rest. <laughs> give us both a rest because the bad thing about going up a hill is you've got to go back down the other side. And I, I assume. And I don't know. Is that when you which discovered one? your brakes didn't work? <laughs> um, when you get close to the bottom and it's got that. You don't get that that 
because it pulls it evenly to help stop it. And when you yeah. get that extra weight going down, that you you know something's not right. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Pull um, off the side, check it, and go. Oh. So uh, one of your videos I watched is uh, along the way you had a mishap, and uh, in fact I saw I went up back to your Facebook page to see if I could get some pictures, but. Um, you had a to you had to get a wrecking truck to move your. You actually got stranded, and it's a interesting to find out just what caused you to be stranded. So, can you tell tell me that story? Okay, so we're driving along, and I call it when we went across the. What river was that? Before we had our mishap, we're gonna have to edit this out. That's all right. Huh? Missouri River. So we're going across the Missouri River, and I like to call it a monsoon because I couldn't see 50 feet in front of me. Rain's coming down. Rain's coming down. And what actually happened before that incident was we were driving along, and we decided we were going to pull off the road because it was just too much rain. We couldn't deal with it anymore. We're going to go to a rest stop. We're going to wait this out. We come around the corner, get off the interstate, come up around the corner, and there goes flip, flip. Off goes the windshield wiper on the driver's side. Oh, Jesus. So we have to park the vehicle, have to get the RV park, get over by the, in the trucking area, park the vehicle, and I got to do the walk of shame and go chase down this windshield wiper because we're in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and trying to find another windshield wiper oh, no. in the rain, in an RV that doesn't like rain. It's not fun. <laughs> but we found it. We got it put back on. It was held together by a uh, spit and... Uh, Bailing, bailing twine, so. <laughs> yes, bailing wire. <laughs> but it worked. We got it to work. Got going down the road. So we get through with that. We're thinking, okay, our one incident for this trip is already done and over with. Nothing else is going to happen. So we're cruising down the road, and all of a sudden, my engine cuts out. Oh. And I look at Lori, and I'm going, well, why would it do that? I said, this is really weird. First thing I thought of was it was the uh, fuel pump right. wasn't sending enough fuel up to the front. So okay, we'll pull it off the side of the road. If that's the case. Then what I did next wouldn't have worked. I turned on the ignition and it starts right back up. And I'm like, what's what's going on? So I put it into gear and we roll forward. I think, okay, we're gonna get up to 35 miles an hour. It cuts out again. Wow! I'm like this is really ridiculous. So we decide, okay, we've tried this three times. We're gonna get as far up. We're gonna try and get up to the next ramp because you got all that traffic going on I-90 and it's going by you. It's raining. People are whizzing by you. Trucks are whizzing by you. They're supposed to pull over in the lane. They're not doing that. And you're just rocking around inside the, the RV. So we pull up a little bit further. We finally get to where we're on an off-ramp, and we're going to get off the road as much as we possibly can. We call um, Good Sam's Roadside Assistance. I've heard a lot of things bad about ro Good Sam's Roadside Assistance. We've used it twice the entire time that we've ever had it, and uh -huh. each time that we've used it has been an outstanding experience. Cool, well, that's good to hear. So they call the tow truck. He comes out. He gets us all hooked up. I get in the cab with him. Lori's in the toad, following us behind in the Dodge. And we get over there, and the guys were talking back and forth. And he says, you know what? Let me check something for you real quick. Keep in mind, this is Sunday in the Midwest about 7 o'clock. Morning or the evening? Guy, this is evening. Okay. So the guy tells me, he says, I'm not going to be able to work on your rig today. It's Sunday. I shouldn't even be out here doing this right now. And I'm like, well, I appreciate it. I understand. Uh, some people get, he gets other people that are in there and they demand that he's going to do this. They got to get back on the road. They got schedules to keep. And I'm like, no, we're not like that. So he gets out. He says, I want to check something real quick. So he walks over. He opens up my, my uh, fuel filter. And he pulls out the fuel filter, and it's completely saturated wet. Oh, so it was your fuel filter, not your... I thought it was your oh, air I'm filter. Sorry. It was the air filter. I oh, air filter. filter. Okay. Yeah. Lori just looked at me and went, it wasn't the fuel filter, it was an air filter. <laughs> like, okay. Air filter. So there's okay. another edit. No problem. No So he is... pulls out that air filter, and it is completely saturated. It is just wet and dripping. And he says, you know what? Let me check this. Let me do something for you. So he walks into his shop. He goes back in the back. He pulls one out of a, a truck that he was working on. He pulls it out, puts it in there, and he says, let's take this for a test drive. I got in it, started right up, went right around the block, and he says, you know what? She pay me 40 bucks for that so I can get the guy a new one, and you guys can take off today. And I was Sweet. like, 
I said, how much do I owe you? He said, 40 bucks for the part. I'm already getting paid for the tow. So 40 bucks for the part and you guys can go. Wow. And uh, down the road we went. That's awesome. So um, uh, I do have a picture. I did take a picture. Of your, uh, uh, for those of you watching the video version of this, uh, I'll have a picture of your fuel filter sh showing on the screen. But, uh, uh, and, and, of course, the wrecking truck, too. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, it's an air filter, remember? We, uh, air I said fuel filter. Oh, did I yeah. say fuel? You well, said fuel, too. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's senior day here at RV Talk Radio. <laughs> so, senior day, we could get away with that. Okay, so uh, you're back on the road, and it sounds like you drove a lot to be where you're at already. I mean, you did do some stopping and get the, you know, in between where you're at now and... and uh, what kind of places did you visit and what, what did you RV learn? parks. So we went yeah. from to Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. Then we went to, I don't even remember. It's been, been one of those trips. We made stops, but the problem was we wanted to get out of Washington. That was our main goal. Right. So that first day we burnt both candles at both ends. And by the time we got to Coeur d'Alene, we stayed one night. We rolled down to the next one. We're going to stay one more night at the next place. And then we end up in Buffalo Springs, Wyoming. Or not Buffalo Springs, in uh, Buffalo, Wyoming. Boy, I'm getting this all messed up. I'm getting dirty looks like you wouldn't believe. Uh, you should be interviewing her. She remembers all this. I know. That's why I do interviews, too. And I get Sherry in the background. She's constantly, uh, I get, she'll, I'll do Correct. shows like this just to give you an idea of what I go through. And she sends me little notes on napkins, you know, and tells me. Don't forget to ask this and don't forget to ask that. So, yeah, it's normal. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and G-B-Y-A-Y. So you're, you've been uh, going to several, uh, you got to go through a couple of several states. So uh, another question I know a lot of people ask is, did you find the RV parks you stayed at affordable? And what about gas? Well, considering Washington State, we started out at, what was it, $4? No, $3.45 a gallon coming out of Seattle. And pulling in this week, we got gas as low as two seventeen. Two seventeen? Wow. Two seventeen. Amazing. Here in Missouri. In Missouri. I gotta say it like Missouri. You know those like, people from Missouri. Yeah, Missouri, Missouri. It's not Missouri, it's Missouri. And I'm like, okay. okay. Uh, Missouri. They keep that in the back of my head. Um, so yeah, that's the spectrum that we started out with. Yes, it was a Memorial Day weekend when we came down. Because we decided that uh, we actually made a phone call. I don't know what it is. So yeah, that's a wide spectrum of the gas prices that we've had. So three forty-five to two seventeen. Yeah. So uh, do you, um, what's how much uh, fuel does your uh, RV hold? Fifty-two gallons. Ah, so that's, that can still be quite the shocker to fill. That. So RV parks, did you find them diverse? You know, quite diverse. Did you find them expensive? Do you feel like you got good value for your money? How did you feel about some of these places that, because sometimes you end up staying at an RV park you didn't really want to stay at, but you kind of had to because of its location? Well, being when we were coming across, that was the big tourist season for RVs going through Yellowstone, yeah. all of that, all that stuff in South Dakota. So the premium places, a lot of those were taken 
there was a place that we stayed in in South Dakota that I was not very happy with. Lori was not very happy with it. Um, holiday, Happy Holiday RV Park in South Dakota. Um, traveling is like it was like a crapshoot when whenever you went to any RV park, especially if you'd never been there before, and you just you have no idea what you're up against each one that you go to. And uh, I was just curious to kind of get your feelings about some of the RV parks. You, you know. Uh, well, you get one bad one, you'll have two really good ones. You have yeah, another yeah. bad one, you'll have two really good ones. So it's all hit or miss. Um, we use the San, or Good Sam's, the, the book that they send out every year with all the different sites in it. Yeah. Looked at the recommendations on there. You can go online while we were filling up and look at the different ones and different locations that are there. With my military discount, it's either the military discount or your Sam's Club, or not Sam's, a good Sam's membership that you can use. And that's basically what we used to go across was just a good Sam's. And we've never used it, so I will never use it again. Which, which one is it? Uh, Camper America. What is it? Passport America. Oh, I know. I, we used to have that too, and it's like... I don't know if you found out about that, but it seems like there's some good discounts, but they're on oddball days. Yeah. And so it's like you're traveling on a Tuesday, but you can get 50% off if you happen to go there on a Thursday. <laughs> and I did a, a, a video about that not like a year ago where to look, look for when you're uh, picking up your membership. So that's another video you could get a lot of good information from that I, I used, but I didn't use because we wanted to have another alternative, try and save some money while we were going across. But some people like Passport America. I did not have a good experience with it because where we were at, there was very limited sites that were available. Yeah. Out on the West Coast, there's plenty of them, but in the Midwest region, once you get into South Dakota, uh, Wyoming, even Montana, you start to lose those off and then you start picking up again as you go the, further east. Yeah. So you said your your RV actually you had it it sat for quite a while before you actually hit the road. So once you kind of get it on the road, they always say that driving an RV on a road is like having a home that's in a constant 7.0 earthquake. So did you find the first couple of uh, travels that the uh, um, little odds and ends you had to tighten up or or change because the RV uh, just hasn't been moved in a while? Well. You're going to find that you're going to forget something. Oh, you'll yeah. always forget something. Yeah. You will hear something open. You'll hear the bedroom door open or you'll hear the bathroom door open <laughs> or even a cabinet will open and something is going to drop. I don't care how much you prepare for it. I was in the Navy for 20 years. We had a, a saying that was called secure for sea. It's the same situation when you get in an RV. You don't want that TV set that you just paid all that money for to roll off and smash on the floor. Yeah. So um, you could so prepare. So one of the things I, I forgot to mention to you that the reason that his uh, channel is called Three Tails RV is because you have three dogs. So yep. I've got to ask this question: Is your dogs weren't uh, trained? They never did the traveling before. How did how did the three dogs handle being on the road? We have three dogs. One's name's Daisy. One name's Buddy, and the other one's name is Snickers. Daisy's the mom. Buddy is the dad, and Snickers is the baby from the two of them. So Daisy has traveled with us, and she was a little squirt. So she is so used to traveling. Those other two, we have to medicate and kennel oh to get them down the road. They will whine. They get into that little shaking fever mode. and shaking mode, and yeah. it just freaks them out because it's moving. It's gotten better, but it's not the same. And another thing that you need to look for if you're, you're planning on doing cross countries with pets is that some states require that they are kenneled while a vehicle is in motion. Nebraska is one of them. Huh. Actually, I didn't know that. Yep. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yep. That's good to know. Not that a lot of people would notice the difference, but at least, I mean, if you got pulled over, that would definitely... Uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, if you got pulled over, uh, I'm sure they would point that out to you. <laughs> well, a lot of it, if, if dogs are up on the dash, that's oh, yeah. the, it's it's a missile hazard if you had to brake real fast. True. 
I don't think I'd have that trouble with Cinder. I can't get her in the dash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've been traveling a couple of days. You're getting over the to the middle, um, mid uh, the mid United States, and you ended up heading south for some reason. How come? Well, we got involved in a work camping situation where we were uh, on a waiting list and they gave us a phone call and wanted to know when we could be there. Wow, so and, the, and this is in the state of what again? Missouri, Missouri. Ah, and what's the name? I'll of get the, it right. <laughs> and what's the name of the RV park? It's Camelot RV Park. Camelot. In Poplar, Missouri. Ah, and how big is this RV park that you're... Or, it's Poplar Bluff, excuse me. Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad your wife is there. <laughs> so am I. Look, look at him going, oh. So how, many, how, many, uh, how big is this RV park that you're uh, now hosting? It's got 74 sites, 77 sites, 76 sites. Wow. I'm being corrected. And, and so it has 70, 76 sites, 54 uh, channels for television, 56, 57 <laughs> Six, one, sixty-one. <laughs> oh, so, oh, funny. <laughs> she says it more than I do. So, sixty-one channels for TV and a regular dump propane for thirty-five dollars a night. Wow! Does it have a recreational area or a pool? This is a no frills park. You gotcha. get what you, you see, what you get. So, there's no extra amenities. There is a um, an area so you can go over a pavilion. They have a, an upper area. They have a, a mid area, and then they have the area that's around by the uh, by the office. Okay, and I'll make sure and put links in the description of, of the RV park that you're hosting. So how long have, how long have you been doing this? A week. A week. <laughs> A week. Oh, you're a professional now. <laughs> We're got it. We're just getting done with our training mode. You betcha. <laughs> We're going to be running the whole show tomorrow. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> um, so the people that were hosting before were did they get a chance to cross train you a little bit, or you just got thrown into it? So, in this particular park, there are three different host positions. Wow. So, there's another couple that's here with us, and they did a majority of the training with us. Went through the routines, got us up to speed. Then it's us, and they are currently looking for another set of hosts to come down here and work through as long as you want to stay. Wow, that's, that's I, exactly I've, I've how never they heard put of it. Them having so many hosts, that's good, and yeah, that's good. Um, uh, so, what are some of the perks of being a RV park host? Well, so far, I've met a lot of veterans that have been going through the area. Missouri is very uh, veteran-friendly state. Cool. Um, some of the perks, basically, we're, we're not getting paid for it. We're getting our lot rent is taken care of. Cool. We have uh, a point where a dollar amount that we get to for our electrical use every year or every year, every week uh -huh. or every month. I'm sorry. I will get this out right. So they have electric use for a limit that we can reach for each month and then they also provide us with propane tank and propane and our lot rent is paid for so and i also get provided a golf cart to do the parts of the job that requires for us to move around so how that works is that my wife is in the lori is up in the office and she takes care of all the check-ins the checkouts and does some light cleaning chores it's the bathrooms the showers and the laundry facility Gotcha. And I get to run around and park people, take care of the different spaces, um, assist with uh, other things with throughout the park. So. Yeah. And as and I, I, some of these questions I asked you before the show, but I got to ask again: Is this a seasonal job or year round? This is a year round facility, so they will be open clear through the winter. Gotcha. And you're saying mm -hmm. that there's quite a few camp hosts that are needed in in the general area that you're talking about you said there was quite I was talking with with another gentleman that was trying to get me to come down to arkansas because they have openings down there so this area has a uh a need for more work campers wow that's cool and i would i'd like to have another one with me because then i can work three days and then have six days off i'm just 
So you work three days, get six days off. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. So it's a nice rotation. So that's the rotation you'll have once you get the third host in there? Yeah. Oh, nice. Good deal. That's a really sweet deal. So are you right near a highway or kind of a, a freeway, highway, by a city? Are you out in the boonies? Where are you? We're on the outskirts of Poplar Bluff. It's right down the road, maybe three miles, if that. Yeah, what's it's uh they've they've got a Walmart, they've got a super center Walmart, they've got a grocery center Walmart, they've got all the fast food chains, they've got steakhouse, they've got Dairy Queen, I mean it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. So what's it's, some it's, what's some of the things people do around there? Is uh fishing, hunting, uh, a lot of fishing, yeah. a lake down here. There's a lake that's right down, not far from here. So we've been told. I haven't. We haven't actually got out and enjoyed and looked around at some of the stuff. But yeah. there's a lot to do. If you're a sportsman, there's plenty to do out here. <laughs> so uh, now to back up a little bit and just take a little picture of going from Seattle to where you're at. And of course, hindsight's always 2020. What? Once you got on the road, what are some of the regrets or things that you said I you messed up on or wish you would have done different? And what are some of the things that you're surprised that worked really well? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of questions. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, I wish we would have kept to our four-hour driving rule that we had originally established that we were only going to go for four hours find a place or call ahead and have a place reserved four hours of driving time and then stayed for a day or possibly two made it more enjoyable because when you're on the go 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 that's when you start getting grumpy with each other and in our, we weren't working together as a team yeah yeah plain and, and that's a common thing uh, so did you find yourself when you're on the road that you felt like you're on vacation and you had limited time? A lot of people say that, um, that the, when you're new to full timing on the road, a lot of people go, 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 go. And, and, and then they get tired and cranky and, and it's not, it doesn't feel like fun. It feels like work. And you just described kind of something I've heard over and over again is, is to learn how to slow it down. And, and and smell the roses a little bit. Yep. Stop um, and smell the roses, exactly. Yeah, so you described that perfectly. It's just uh, uh, a lot of people that first get on the road and, and they are full-timers, uh, it takes them a few months to get out of that mode of thinking you're on vacation where you're actually, you're, you're actually living every day. And so... You, um, uh, Stopping that, and, and staying at a place for two, three days at a time, then go again. That's a hard thing to start to learn, I know. Well, and then, like I said, driving an RV is not like driving your car. <laughs> no. There's a lot more to it. You've got more to look at. There's just, it's just, uh, it, it's it's hard to describe until you're actually in that situation. Because I, you just can't physically sit in the chair. don't know. RV seats when you're driving like they do a car. You just don't have the room to stretch out. Right. It's all tight because they've got limited nose. There's just so much room that they can get that in and you're sitting on top of a hurricane just like you described it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the other thing is did you find it a, a, um, like when me and Sherry are RVing, we, um, it takes a little time but you become a team and it gets to a point that you find out like in your case Lori takes care of certain things. You take care of other mm -hmm. things. And then you kind of check in with each other. Uh, did it take you a little while to get that routine down to I'll do this part, you do that part, and then we remind each other to do our parts? Well, parts is parts. <laughs> um, it, it did, but we talked about it beforehand. Our, our problem always was that we were always trying to be in a hurry. We want to get this. We want to get on the road. We want to get it done. We want to get it over with. We just want to go, 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 go. And you just can't do that. You'll actually go faster by slowing down. And yeah. I hate that, that. For some people, that's hard to believe. But if you take your time, make sure that everything is taken care of and do one thing at a time and start to try to do it all at once. It actually goes faster. We actually, our speeds increased. But then when we'd stop somewhere for a while, and we hadn't done it in a while, like when we stopped in Iowa, we were in Iowa for a month. 
Then when we came down here, it was like that little 30 minute process just turned into 45 minute to an hour one because how did I do this? Yeah, yeah. Because I hadn't done it in a month. So then we had to check each other. Oh, what about this? What about that? Okay, we're good. Yeah. Do you guys use a checklist or anything? I have one. We started using it, and then once you get into a routine, it's 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 not hard to get away from. I mean, it's it's easy to get away from it because you're like, okay, I got this, I got that, I got this. Yeah. Do you uh, do you Just, guys try to do a walk around or anything like that before you hit the road? Oh, we hit. We walk around everything. I check the the tire temperature. I check the oil. I check all of the fluids in it before I go anywhere. Because if you don't, that'll be that one. Oops. Yeah. I forgot this. I forgot that. I forgot to put the in. The Wi-Fi antenna down. I forgot to. Uh, it's you're gonna miss something. I don't. A checklist will help, but if you're in a big hurry and you're you're just like, oh, I don't have time for that. You're gonna miss it anyway. So I gotta ask this question. There's been like three or four channels right now that have been complaining about mice. Have you had any problems with a mouse? No. It seems like it's this time of year or something. We had trouble with our one. One time in the other RV, and we ended up using spray foam and um, steel wool. Yep, did that too. <laughs> Shoved that into a hole, filled that thing full of, of that. We haven't been anywhere for any length of time out there. We never had a problem. So are you Just finding the time. climate in Seattle? Um, <laughs> are you finding anything different, uh, now you're in different regions, that you didn't compensate for or I, I i mean I, for example when we went to arizona and we had to sit for a while we ended up having to insulate our windows and stuff like that because it was too hot and of course when you're from washington that's never an issue it's actually sometimes too cold or t too wet um uh, is there well, any actually, weather conditions that have caught you off guard is really my question heating or cooling an rv that you've been driving for eight hours is going to be almost virtually impossible unless you have brand new AC units in your rig. Yeah. And what I mean by that, you're trying to take it down from a hundred or anywhere from 90 to a hundred degrees. And you're going to try and get it down to comfortable levels after you've been driving all day in that heat, you're not going to be able to do it. You're never going to catch up to getting it down to where it's a comfortable level unless it gets really cold in the evening. I actually took something from your playbook and got an other AC unit. Yeah, I was going to ask you if, you're gonna, if you've done that. Um, and we actually, I'm getting the glare. Lori's, <laughs> Lori's son gave us another AC unit because nice. he said it was just too hot in the RV for us. So it's one of those mobile ones, stick yeah. it in the window and out it goes. Yep. That that has, has saved us. Not well. It, since we got back to Iowa, where the heat has just been unbearable. Yeah. Well, unbearable compared to Seattle, where it doesn't get above eighty degrees ever. Yeah. And then we move get back here, and we're in the ninety plus, and you're just like I'm melting. I can feel it. I'm melting. Yeah. So that's what scared me when I got the uh, Arizona, is we're living in an RV and we're getting those hot temperatures, and I have two air, two air conditioners, but they were working all the time, and my biggest fear was damaging them or breaking breaking them so that's what we did is we went and got a portable and uh boy that really took the stress off of the main ac units um and they're still working i've never had trouble with the, my acs at all but i was working them hard i tell you well the one problem that we did run into and some of the parks coming across they didn't have the one tens hooked up um, in some of the pedestals yeah. so they got the the 50 and the 40, but they didn't want to hook up the 110s because they didn't want people running extension cords to do exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're a one or two nighter, that's costing them more money than what they're making. So they don't want you doing that. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow. So uh, um, now that you can say, in a sense, you're official full-timer on the road moving, nomad in a way, um, and nomads de defined in the book as <laughs> I found this out just the other day, a, a person on the move is a, is a nomad. So you don't have to be living in a van to be a nomad. Anybody that's on the move doesn't have a residence and, and is moving is considered a nomad. So you now are qualified as a nomad. Yep. But under that definition, if I'm more camping, then I'm not a nomad. 
Well, you could, you could be. I mean, I'm you, still homeless. Yeah, you are homeless. But and that's the other thing I just did a show on is like, are you homeless? And the def- definition of from the government is if you don't own a, a base or a residence, you are homeless. And it's like, it doesn't feel like it. I know when you're in RV, it does not feel like you're homeless because that's well, your home. But Which brings up a good story because when my mom, when we got to Iowa, uh-huh. after the first night, she says, well, how does it feel to be back in your home state? And I said, mom, it's no different. I got the same living room, the same kitchen, <laughs> the yeah, same yeah. bedroom. Yeah, All yeah. I did was move it. And <laughs> that's the one weird thing because you've got that constant. People go, well... You live in an RV. Yeah, all of my stuff is inside of my vehicle. So it doesn't really feel like I'm doing anything. What really messed us up was that we, when we pulled into, I can't remember what state it was, but we pulled into the state, we got into the RV park, we got it all set up, and we were like, we got two hours before these places are going to start closing, so we need to go get something to eat. No, by the time we got there, we had like 45 minutes to eat and get out so that they could close. Uh, time zone. Because we forgot the time zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so weird. And I had the same trip last week. We were just driving up to Idaho, and the time zone changed from Arizona to uh, Oregon, a certain part of Oregon. And then we got back into Idaho, and it changed again. And yet there is a straight, it was straight. And it's like, it's really weird how the time zones work in certain areas because it's not a straight line. <laughs> Anyway, definitely yeah. screwed us up. <laughs> but yeah, thank God this most of the time self um your cell phone will pick that up. That's yeah, safe. but your watch won't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Unless you got one of those new Apple watches, mine. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Cool. So uh we've done your whole uh, interview today from your R V. Yep. And uh uh sounds like you guys have pretty good Wi Fi. They're in the process of upgrading the system here, but it's it's working. Yeah, it's handling this interview pretty well. So it's you're able to do what you're doing on Skype, and that's a, that's pretty good. I've been in worse. <laughs> I said, if you're an RVer and you're playing games on the road, it ain't going to work like that. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, so that's another good question people <laughs> ask is, as you travel, did you find it frustrating with the Internet? Actually, um, before I left, I put a... The King Swift Wi-Fi Omnidirectional RV Wi-Fi Antenna System. Say that 10 times fast. It'll drive you nuts. Yeah, yeah. There's a video coming out about an unboxing for that, and I'm going to be doing a review right yeah, afterwards. Okay. But I actually installed that in the RV, and what it is is a range extensor. It doesn't have your uh, cell capability on it, but you can get the Wi-Fi inside of a park, and then you can get it into your RV and it will set up for all your devices. So you click one time, click to make three clicks, and you've got Wi-Fi inside your coach, yeah. and you don't have to. So it extends the range of it for yeah, you. Yeah, that sounds just like my Wi-Fi Ranger. So That's it, what it, we do. It, cool. Yeah, but this is like half the price. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so back then, I think it was the only thing available back three years ago or something. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm sure it's so, cheaper. That made it really easy for us to get Wi-Fi inside of the RV. We stopped at several places. Uh, I don't think we had any bad problems with any of the parks having Wi-Fi on the way out here. And oh. I'm, we're not talking one or two. We're talking about like at least eight or nine different places that we stopped. Yeah. The only place that we had any problem was in Iowa. And we were in a small town at a, a community park that... Uh, and it's not even, it was set up for RVs, but it was not an RV park and there was no Wi Fi and that we had zero cell coverage. That was the wow. only place that we had any issues all the way from Seattle to here. So, cool. So, um, I'm getting to the point where I got to wrap this up. However, could you take the time to once again describe your channel, your Facebook, your, um, kind of your story and a little bit of what your what we could when we go to your channel what are we going to find and 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 so tell us a little bit of what you'd like people to know that uh to know to find you and i'll make sure and put in the description so we've got uh three tails rv and it's the l- number three tails just like a tail on a dog yep. rv so three I, tails I, rv i do have your logo over your picture so they okay. can, they can so 
and that's where the dog came from. His name is actually I'm trying to get the wife to look over here. Ra- Roscoe. <laughs> so that dog, that graphic there, his name is Roscoe, gotcha. and and that's where it comes from. Is we, we have again three dachshunds that we travel with, and when so we. Wow, Rob, you got me going. I'm thinking so fast. I'm like, okay, so Three Tails RV, it originally came because of the dogs. Um, on my channel, I do a hodgepodge of DIY uh, tips, DIY projects, tips, tricks, and other creative stuff that's on there. I've done travel videos. I've done d- mostly DIY projects, uh, accessory reviews. It's just a hodgepodge. Uh, travel videos are going to – they are l- – there's a bunch coming from this last portion of the trip. I'm going to try and do a video where it's a day in the life of a work camper so that people can see kind of an idea of what goes on while you're work camping. That'd be good. It has been a different experience for us. I wasn't sure what we were going to get into or if we were going to enjoy it. We've been here a week. We got trained up. Uh, like I said, next couple of days we're going to be by ourselves. So we're on a you work, work to you work two you're on three you work get two days off again then we're gonna be on for three and then off it's it's really not that bad you're working two days a week three days a week there's another couple we're looking for another couple to go along with that um and if you've got any questions about that you can send me an email at uh, three tails rv at gmail.com and i can get you in connected with the lady that runs the park out here or the husband and wife team that run the park out here. And I'm sure that they will uh, at least do an interview with you, figure out the process. And once we do that, it's going to be two on, six off, two on, six off. So we'll have three different pe- groups of people in here. So you'll have plenty of times to go do whatever you do. They're flexible with the vacation, with the holidays coming up. I mean, if you've got to go do something, if there's three groups of us, we can usually work it out between the three couples to get things taken care of. Nice. And they're all about taking care of your family and being, and they're very family oriented with the park. So it's just something to think about. If, if you're interested in it, like I said, just drop me an email at three tails, RV at gmail.com. Cool. And I can get you connected with the, the owners of the, of, of the group. Um, we have a 34 foot or 32, 34 foot bounder, 34 D bounder that we have done all this renovations to. We set out on a on, on I hate to use it, but we set out on a, a quest to uh, get our rig ready so that we were ready to be on the road. I've added Wi-Fi to it. I've added I took all the carpet out of it, put in vinyl floors. I put in uh, cabinets for TVs, installed TVs, uh, redid the dash. I mean, it's just a plethora of stuff that I've done to the RV. And what that is is most of that is the the process about the channel is about the process that we use to get our RV ready so that we could be on this RV adventure that we're on now. Cool. Well, hey, I want to thank you very much for doing the interview with uh, RV Talk Radio. And, and of course, we always love the logos you make for us. That's always been great. And, and I'm so glad that you finally get a chance to hit the road. I know because I've known you for a long time, we, you talked about it. And a lot of times the, the cards didn't come out the way you wanted them to. But um, so as soon as I heard you, that you actually got on the road, I was very happy for you. So, uh, so to your wife and all your little puppies and all that stuff, I want to thank you very much for doing an interview with us on RV Talk Radio. Well, thanks, Rob, for having us. You bet. Well, hey, we got to let you go and uh, uh, stay in touch, and I'm going to follow up on some of your uh, hosting stuff, as <laughs> uh, RV hosting, and I, I want to know more about that. And I'm sure a lot of other people would, too, so we'll, we'll have you on again. Okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Rob. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Aaron Jemerson. Uh, got a lot of things going on for him, so that's that's, that's great to see that they made it out on the road and they're doing what they want to do uh please uh don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and also uh listen to our podcast on a regular basis you can pull up through your regular podcast software uh you can can also catch us on good talk radio we're syndicated on the weekends uh saturdays 
and Sundays. And uh, yeah, um, a speaker too. So if you go down our description, you'll find links to where all of our shows are. And don't forget to go down the description and check out Three Tills RVs uh, YouTube channel and their Facebook. So yeah, uh, guys, thank you very much for listening. Till next time, uh, be safe and buy yourself an RV. <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. Bye. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available in Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.